So from two o'clock up to five, I was waiting on God. And at five o'clock, I felt the presence of the Lord come and sit on the bed before me. And then I opened my heart and started talking with the Lord over many other issues about my own personal life. I should not always be praying for other people, you know. I should also talk to the Lord about myself. Just heart to heart talk between father and son. Not, not business, no business. Just family talk. How I feel, what I like, I don't like. And then he was just lovingly listening to all I said. And every now and then, he made some remarks. And at, the, at, at six o'clock, he said, all right, I'm leaving now. So I was going to finish my prayer when I felt a check in my spirit, continue waiting. You will have a visitor now. So as I waited, after a few minutes, the prophet Moses walked into my room. And he came and he sat on the very spot where the Lord Jesus had sat. And I looked at him. And I asked him, sir, what do you want to speak to me? I, you know, I had only plan to pray for today's message later in the day. So I thought, since I have the whole day, I, I have to send my apologies to Brother Terry for missing your session this morning. So I'll wait on the Lord and get. But when Moses came, and he started talking to me about the United States of America, and he said, he started speaking, and I quickly wrote down all the things that he wrote to, he spoke to me. And this is what I'm going to share with you right now. What I shared so far are the history, what have already taken place or been taking place. But what I'm going to share with you right now is what was shown to me this morning. The first statement he said is this. This nation's hypocrisy will be torn. It will be torn apart. Secondly, its leaders are pretending. President Obama will be punished. They are making many evil plans in secret against their people. He gathers with his favorite advisors and some influential wealthy people in hidden underground places to make plans. I didn't understand this hidden underground places, no? But this is what he said, hidden underground places. His palace will burn with fire. His palace, the White House. That is his palace, isn't it? Number three, as a snake will coil around its prey, wickedness has coiled all around this nation. Number four, gays, gays will come to rule. They will even be appointed to positions and offices. Now, when they come to rule, and when they are appointed to offices and to positions of influence, this is what they will do. Their main target will be children. Why will they target children? This is Satan's diabolical evil plan to plot the plan of God over the children. You know, God has a great plan for children, the 12-year-olds and below, 0 to 12-year-olds. A mighty prophetic anointing is going to be poured out upon the children. And even the babies are, will cast out demons. Psalms 8-2 says that. And the children will begin to see visions. They will prophesy. 
and they'll do great exploits for God. We begin to see that in trickles right now. That is why all over the world you will see right now like a resurgence of a revival of a coming out of the gays into public all over the world not just in the United States even conservative nations like India China Malaysia Singapore Vietnam the gays are making a statement they are strongly protesting to the government to bend their rules change their rules and make them one and acceptable in the society this is the plan of God I'm sorry this is the plan of the devil of course God allows that if you read Romans chapter 1 because of the depravity of their sins and their unwillingness to repent God turns them over to their basis of desires he turns them over okay go and be fulfilled go just wallow like a pig that stays in the mirror like the dog that sits and eats its own vomit go God turns them over to a reprobate mind which means there's no point of turning back to repentance no more you pass beyond the stage once you are turned over for the destruction of your flesh into the devil's hand there's no turning back there's no turning back all over the world not only the gays wants equal rights or acceptance and they demand the right to get married but listen they now also make a demand to adopt children yeah. why have you ever thought why if you are throwing away the cause of nature to have children and a man is sticking together with a man and a woman together with a woman which nature tells us you cannot have an offspring why do they then want to adopt a child to corrupt the next generation what else you bring up an entire generation of gays little baby when you baby you know when he grows up in a gay family what does the baby sees all his life father father or mother mother so it is ingrained in the baby's culture or upbringing there's no such thing as father mother so what will be the boy or the girl grow up a gay right they'll grow up as a gay that will be their lifestyle natural lifestyle so you have 10,000 gay couples with 10,000 babies and they all grow up as gays this is one city how many cities are there in the US how many nations in the world you multiply all of them you have millions of the next generation gays now why is all this necessary why is there sudden resurgence of the gay community there is a spiritual reason for all that you know for the Lord Jesus Christ to say before the second coming as it was in the days of Lot so shall it be in your days as it was in his days so why is it that this thing the gayism must arise in the last days why there must be some <coughs> excuse me there must be some spiritual significance there why you know I have read in some uh, 
books of some other cultures, there is a connection between gay and witchcraft. There is a link between them. That this witchcraft or certain witchcraft or spells to work, it must be performed by gays. Uh, gays are very a necessity part. Gays, lesbians, and transgenders. You know transgenders, don't you? These transgenders, these three people group, are very, very important for witchcraft, for the spells to work. The male sperm and the female eggs ovules from a gay person has a more open than a married person's. So that seed is a very important ingredient in demon worship. It's life, you know. You're offering a life. Now, there is a whole secret to why blood must be shed for the remission of sins. We do not know the full potential of it. But the scripture says that. And there is life in the blood. So the life must be offered. So like life being in the blood, there is life in the sperm. There's life in the ovule. Am I right, everybody? And when that life is presented in demon worship, it produces something. I don't understand the full complex of it. But I'm just telling you a gist of what it all involves. Number five, abortion will increase. Children between the age group of 12, 13 will commit abortion. Young teens within the age group of 14 to 15, sexual promiscuity will increase rapidly among them. Now all this is done for the rising up of the spiritual influence of the gays. Because of the spiritual influence of the gays, this kind of abortions and sexual promiscuity will increase rapidly, rapidly among the younger targeted group. Now this is what happened in Sodom and Gomorrah an entire nation was gay. If you read Genesis chapter 18, verse 20 to 21, and chapter 19, verse 4, it says that from the young to the old, they were all homosexuals, from the young to the old, they all lusted after the two angels that came into Lot's family, the young and the old, the poor and the wealthy, an entire nation, gay. Number six, she is sinking deeper and deeper into a sinkhole. You know, by this time, I was losing all kinds of hopes, whatever I have because nothing good was ever spoken. I myself felt when he said sinking deep and I felt my heart was sinking. But then he looked at me and he said, but see the grace of God. When he said, see the grace of God, I looked up to heaven. And then I saw heavens opened. And in one place of heaven, I saw some saints of American descent among them, a few of the pioneer founding fathers of America, presidents of the US. One particular person that I recognized was Josh Washington, because I had seen him several times in heaven. So with him, there was another three American presidents. I do not know who the other three are, but I know there were four. Four of them, 
looking intently at the affairs that were happening in the U.S. and they all stretched out their hands and they prayed unto God, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. They all were praying. And they were reaching out their hand. You know, they stood at the place and they were looking down. And they could see the earth. They were looking down at the affairs that were going on. And they were trying to stretch out their hands to help the nation come back to God. In the year 2008, I was in Grand Rapids, Michigan, preaching at a church meeting. And while I was preaching, suddenly I saw an open vision of President George Washington kneeling down and praying very much for the United States of America. His tears rolled down his eyes and he fell on the sand. And the Lord looked at me and he said, I will surely answer the prayers of those tears. And I saw a hand come and scooped up that sand, the tears-filled sand, and kept in heaven. And every now and then God looks at that, and that tears are pleading up before God. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You know, there, there were godly presidents in the United States who made prayer their habit. They were great students of the Bible. They prayed very ardently. You know, after I saw this vision, this morning I googled about the presidents of the U.S. and I read something about them. And I did found four presidents who were the most godly ones. I was amazed. Among the many four, the most godly ones. And they are there also part of the council when it comes to the affairs concerning the U.S. Number seven. The military will be used by God to chastise the nation and pull her out of the brink of destruction. Now, I don't want to say what this military is. When the, when the Prophet Moses said, when he said military, he did not say whether it was a U.S. military or any other foreign nation military. He didn't specify. And he just said the military. The military will be used by God to chastise the nation and pull her out of the brink of destruction. And as I was wondering, he looked at me and said, just look at what happened to Israel. God used Nebuchadnezzar's army to discipline Israel. If you read Jeremiah chapter 25, verses 9 to 11, he says that God sent the army of Nebuchadnezzar to imprison Israel and take her captive. And they, there they serve Nebuchadnezzar in Babylon for 70 years. On August the 6th, 2014, you know, there, I was interviewed by a, a ministry called the TrueNews.com ministry on the radio program. So they were trying to get me to be interviewed for months. And uh, I just kind of keep on ignoring it, you know. Say, who am I, you know, I'm not, I'm a, I'm not a somebody, I'm not a nobody. Of course I'm a nobody. So why should they want to interview me, you know, I thought this was some kind of a prank. So I ignored all the emails. Every email that comes, I'll just press the delete button. Delete, 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 you know. But it kept on increasing. So I thought this must be, maybe it's God has to do something with that. Because if you delete it once, you know, in America they say it's out of mind, out of sight. <laughs> Amen? Okay. See how good you all are? But 
this ministry who has never seen me kept on insisting that I should be interviewed. So when it happened several times, so I thought this must be God. So I said, okay, when I'm coming to Lancaster, I'll give you a time. So it was on August the 6th at 12 noon. So before they came on the air to interview me, I prayed, Lord Jesus, I do not know what they're going to interview me about. If it is just my salvational experience, it's so easy. But if it's going to be something else, then I won't know what to answer them. So please teach me. As soon as I prayed that, I saw an angel come and stood before me. And he said, I have been sent to help you answer the interviewer. So that brought me great assurance that now I'm in good hands. So before the interviewer will pose a question, I already know the question. So he started. Nice, nice prophetic brother. He started and then he came to a question. What do you think about or what God is speaking to you about the U.S.? Before he posed that question, this angel walked up towards me and handed me a note. On it was written, Russia will invade the U.S. He said, tell him that. So, because we were on the air, I had no time to be emotional about it. <laughs> so I said, my dear brother, Russia will invade the U.S. He was shocked. He said, God really spoke to you that? I said, yes, an angel just walked up to me. <laughs> I don't know why you are laughing. If I am an American, I will be shaking to my bones. I don't know why you, you find it so funny. Anyway, on last month, July the 20, 2014, while I was in my TV studio taping some programs, this was just about the time when two, of, two cities belonging to Ukraine had fallen to the pro-Russian rebels. This is about that time. So while I was taping a program, an angel came and stood right beside the camera. See, when I'm in, taping in my studio, I don't have an audience. Right now I look at every one of you, but in the studio I just look at the camera. When I look at the camera, I, I imagine my audience. So the angel came and stood right beside the camera and he said, look, when he said look, I saw the scenario in Ukraine. And he said, whatever is happening in Ukraine has been planned. And then I saw the face of President Putin. He said, he has done this. It was a test to see how the US and the rest of the world will react. It was just a test to see how the entire world and the U.S., particularly he used the word, the U.S. will react. And the world kept quiet. The bear which came out of hibernation will stump its foot down to showcase its might and great strength. It doesn't stop there, you know. Ukraine was just an experiment. It was just an experiment to, to see how it can flex its muscles, stretch its legs, its, and snarl its teeth. And once this is successfully done, all the while Putin was denying that Russia had any part in it, but now they are openly declaring, yes, we did it. They are openly declaring it now. And they are going to go into full force to take the whole of Ukraine. 
And what is NATO doing? Nothing. What is the US doing? Nothing. So, now the bear can have a free run. Anyway, Americans love bears, you know. You love Yogi Bear? <laughs> but this is not Yogi Bear, you know. This is Putin Bear. <laughs> well, when he was done, I looked up at Prophet Moses and I asked him, Sir, is there anything they can do to mitigate all this? Is there anything they can do to mitigate, to soften the impact, to reduce the judgment, to reduce the punishment? Is there anything they can do? And Moses, he looked at me, he smiled, and he asked me this question. What they really do? They are too self-centered. This is what heaven thinks about you. They are too self-centered. They only care about themselves. They will not weep and pray for their nation. They are too self-centered. But nevertheless, I would not give up, you know. I looked up at him. Just like how a little boy would yearn for mercy from his father. I said, please, please, give me a key. What can they do? Please. And then he said, if the nation, by that I, I understood the leaders, if the nation and the people will do what Joel said. <coughs> now, what did Joel say? Please turn with me to Joel chapter 2. Verses 12 to 17. Therefore, also now says the Lord, turn even to me with all your heart and with fasting and with weeping and with mourning and tear your heart and not your garments and turn unto the Lord your God for he is gracious and merciful slow to anger and of great kindness and repenteth him of the evil who knows if he will return and repent and leave a blessing behind him, even a meal offering and a dream offering unto the Lord your God. Blow the trumpet in Zion, sanctify a fast, call a solemn assembly, gather the people, sanctify the congregation, assemble the elders, gather their children and those that nurse at the breasts and those that and let the bridegroom go forth from his chamber and the bride out of a room. Let the priests, the ministers of the Lord, weep between the porch and the altar and let them say, Spare thy people, O Lord, and give not thine heritage to reproach, that the nations should rule over them. Why should they say among the people, where is their God? If the nation and the people will do what Joel said, tear their heart and repent. If you can do this, and if they can do what Second Chronicles 7.14 says, if my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves. That's the first thing, humbly. And repent, turn away from all their wicked ways and pray. Then I will look down from heaven. 
I will hear their prayer and I will heal the land. And they will repent and cry out. This is the key. The Prophet Moses told me, this is the key. Total repentance and turning around. If they can do this, all this can be mitigated. You know, there are so many prayer meetings taking place all over the land. People gather sometimes in stadiums. But how do they pray? Do you tell your heart? Do you throw yourselves on your face, weep and wail and mourn? You don't do that. We don't do that, you know. We pray professional prayers. A one minute professional prayer. Like a dinner you put in the microwave oven. One minute, it's all done. A fast food prayer. That is why you're sinking. You're sinking. We have so much of fun and entertainment in the church. The church is no different from a discotheque today. No different. If you go into a church or if you go into a discotheque, you find no difference. It's the same. How many are there who, who tear their heart? You do, we are not asking you to pray for India. We are not asking you to pray for Africa. This concerns your own nation. Your very survival. Your very restoration is dependent on that. You know, a wicked nation that Jonah abhorred so much. It was so wicked, Nineveh, so wicked. And Jonah dreaded to go to Nineveh because it was a wicked nation. They are murderers, robbers, slave people. He was even afraid to go to Nineveh. But God said, whether you like it or you don't like it, go. So he walked from one end to another end. A three days walking journey. And he prophesied, in 40 days you will be judged. You know, the king of Nineveh is not a believer. He's a heathen. Not only just a heathen, but a monstrous wicked heathen. The news reached him. And this heathen believed the word of a prophet. From the king all the way down up to the animals. Even the nursing babies were deprived of the mother's milk. They all fasted and prayed and sat in the open in sackcloth and ashes. A wicked, monstrous murderer did that. And God saw that, you know. He saw that. How could such a monstrous nation repent? And that touched the heart of God. And it, they took mercy from God. God did not give them mercy. They took the mercy from God because of their humility, because of their repentance. Can you do that? You are not as wicked as Nineveh. You are good people. You are righteous people. But where is your heart? Is your heart soaked in sin? Just like how you dip apple in honey. Is your heart soaked in sin? And is that all you care for? You know, when I pleaded for you, before Moses, he said, will they really do it? 
It's a question in doubt. You know, I was very, very sheepishly, like a little boy before a father. He says, sir, why would you say that? They are too self-centered. That is the opinion they have about the Americans. Self-centered, too self-centered. You know, just to say self-centered is okay than to say too self-centered. Don't laugh. It's about you, not about me. Why are you laughing? It's not funny, you know. It's something to be ashamed of, isn't it? It's not a good opinion about yourself. Something to be ashamed of. Is this who I really am? I must be ashamed of. My dear brothers and sisters, there is hope. You should not go into captivity like how Israel went into captivity. You know, when Israel went into captivity for 70 years, righteous Daniel was in captivity. Righteous Jeremiah was in captivity. Righteous Nehemiah was in captivity. And righteous Ezra was in captivity. They all were in captivity because of the corporate punishment that came upon the nation. Even the righteous go into captivity. We leave this in your hands. There's only one way, only one way to do. Tear your heart. Professional prayers will no more save you. You know, a two-minute prayer, a one-minute prayer is no more going to save you. If you want to come out of this, there's only one way. You know, if you read before the Lord Jesus died, he cried with a loud voice. Why did he do that? To make his life come out of him. That's why he cried. He cannot die because he's God. The Lord Jesus Christ cannot die. But he gave up his ghost. That's why he cried out with a loud voice, forcing the life out of him. Likewise, you need to force out the sin out of your nation. The only way is to cry aloud unto God. That's the only way. The ministers of God, crying at the pouches before the altar, You know, when he said that, I thought, oh, this is already a lost game. No go. It's a goner. Because most ministers don't do that. But if, if you are willing to do that, spread the news around. This is your only hope, your last chance, your last chance. Over and over you have heard this. God has sent ministers of the ministers, prophets of the prophets, not only from overseas, even your own prophet from your own land has the same word. Right? Even your own prophet has the same word. Outsiders like us just confirm that time will delay no longer. Time will delay no longer. Let us stand up for a word of prayer. I hear the Lord Jesus Christ Say to me now, he said, tell them, I will not hold out 
judgment much longer. A time has been appointed for them to make amends, to turn away from their wicked ways. For I have sent forth my angels into the highways and the byways of this land, stationed at every churches, to see to see the affairs and the repentance of my people. And I see angels with bottles in their hands to collect the tears I see them also gone into many house churches, little prayer groups all over the land, all over the land. God in his great mercy I see right now the council in heaven and standing at the head of the table is the prophet Moses and he's flanked by many other saints and again the word comes there's not much time there's not much time the destiny of the nation will be decided soon. And I see on the table many large scrolls, some of them opened, not completely, but halfway. Please take it to your heart. Make a decision tonight what you will do about it. Unless and until you tear your heart and prostrate yourselves before the living God and cry out your heart in true repentance and in true prayers and also putting away all wicked ways from the midst of you putting away the thought of divorces putting away the thought of adultery putting away the thought of promiscuity putting away the thought of licentious sins sexual sins putting away all those thoughts away. Do not even entertain the thought of getting a divorce. Cast it away. Cast it away. Put your marriage on the altar of the Lord. Crucify your flesh. It is your flesh that demands independence from the marriage union established by God. Crucify your flesh that demands to be great, that demands to be recognized, that demands to be known. Crucify that. Crucify that. Today is the day of salvation. Today. I see a very bright, shining saint standing on my right side. Thank you. Put 
away every leaven out of your hearts put away every leaven out of your hearts out from the midst of you and be a sanctified and holy people unto god i see several angels now stretching out a canopy like a white linen cloth four of them are holding at the four corners and they are stretching it out like above the heads of the people and this is the word that comes all those who are truly godly god will protect them under the shadow of his banner all those who choose to walk in holiness thank you wonderful jesus all those who choose to walk in righteousness this banner of love will protect you from the scorching sun and from the biting cold thank you wonderful jesus shall we all kneel down our gracious and loving heavenly father who do we have in heaven lord beside you what have we done lord to deserve such great mercy and kindness from you thank you lord for being good to us in spite of our wickedness thank you for being kind to us lord in spite of our being selfish oh lord you are righteous you are all together righteous your ways are righteous you are just lord you are just to punish us you are righteous to punish us lord because our ways are unrighteous before you because our ways are not clean before you oh lord our mouth are not pure before you we have not that covenant with our eyes not to be holy we are we are a filthy nation lord we are a filthy people lord oh lord be gracious unto us you said lord if we will humble ourselves if we will repent if we will turn away from our wicked ways you will hear us now we pray that you will hear us lord make your ways known to us lord forgive us for being self-centered forgive us for being very selfish <laughs> forgive us lord for being a people of faith so my heart
move your body, let your spirit soar Ella, your Adam, move your body And the way you speak to me brings thoughts I always hoped that you would stay